welcome to Musotech. Uh, this is the, uh, the show that's for you, the musician, to learn a little bit more of the technical side of uh, what you do each day and uh, maybe help you improve your sound, your lighting, your uh, instruments, um, and just know a little bit more, if something goes wrong, how to, uh, how to fix it. So today we're going to talk about mixers, mixing desks. And um, they're known as uh, mixers, consoles, desks, uh, you name it, but the, the basic uh, job of the mixer is to, um, to bring in your, uh, your sources, your different sources, so your microphones, guitars, etc., and mix the sound together and then output it to your front of house speakers, uh, the PA system, which everybody hears you from. Um, it also provides uh, monitors, usually fallback for you, so you can hear yourself and uh, make sure you're singing in tune and uh, can hear the other people and other instruments in the band. But today we'll just concentrate on uh, getting sound out to your front of house speakers. So here we have the, the desk, in this case it's a, a Mackie. It's not the most basic desk but it's also uh, uh, fairly, fairly simple to operate once you get your head around. It might look complex at the moment when you, if you haven't had anything to do with a mixer before, it looks like a lot of knobs uh, and a bit scary for the first time. So as you can see across here we have rows of knobs and uh, this particular desk has 16 rows or 16 actual channels you can put in there in here um, it's actually 12 rows that's 16 different inputs you can put in and mix together at the same time so this first eight you'll notice um, or actually first ten uh, you'll notice that there's a, um, a, a round sort of connector up here. I don't know whether you can see them, but it's where it's similar to where this one's plugged in. So that's the uh, XLR connector. Yeah, you may see them a little bit better on that shot there. They're across the top there. So there's 10 of those. So that's your usual microphone um, inputs with uh, a plug similar to that one there. Um, and um, so on this particular desk, we can have up to 10 of those inputs. If we break the desk down into individual channels, um, it's a lot easier to understand. So if a channel is one row down here and it's got a fader at the bottom, you've probably all seen a fader. And we'll start right at the top. So at the top, like I said, we have our input and uh, in this case it's a microphone. Um, so we've got that plugged into the, the top connector there. Underneath that you have the ability to plug in um, like a line source such as a um, keyboard or guitar or um, music, playback music for, um, for backing tracks, uh, click tracks etc. You could plug them into that that particular input. As I said, these are the same all the way across. So if you learn this first row, you'll um, understand the rest. Uh, below that we have another jack, another quarter inch or 6.3mm uh, jack and um, that's an insert and what that means, we won't go into detail on that today, but that is just where you can insert a certain type of um, sound or um, processor um, some sort of an outboard um, box that will treat the sound just on that particular uh, channel, such as uh, a, uh, an equaliser or a, uh, an effect of some sort that you just want on that channel only. And below that we have one of the most important little knobs, which is the first knob, rotary knob that you'll see on the, uh, at the top usually, and that is known as your gain or attenuator input level and that's exactly input level is exactly what it sets it sets the level matches the level you use it to match the level of whatever is coming in um, so that it's a nice clean signal at its optimum level so I'll explain that a little bit more later on but for a microphone usually a good place to start is uh, about 12 o'clock where I've got it there now right just below that you'll see a little switch um, and it's got uh, a little um, marking on it which indicates a rolling off of bass. So if you don't want bass 
um, in your sound, if it's going to muddy up your sound, such as vocals, uh, you push that button, it's called a low cut or a high pass filter, you uh, push that down and it just makes it a cleaner sort of sound without any of the rumbles, etc. But obviously for bass and drums and things, you probably want that left out. Because we're on a microphone, we'll push it in. The next section here, these four knobs here, you'll see, the two blues, the white and the other blue, um, they're equalisation, so that's your, your tone of your sound. So um, the top one is high, so that's your, uh, your treble sort of sound. I'll demonstrate that in a minute when we uh, get a source going in there. That's your high. The next one, the next two knobs work together on this particular desk. Sometimes you won't have two, you'll only have one. Similar to over here, you'll see there's only, um, there's only one mid. This is your mid frequency. So um, over here, you just have the one knob and it controls this, the, mid, the, the mid frequencies that it, it's already um, set to. But back to the first channel, it actually has what they call sweepable mid which means you can actually choose, with the white knob, you can choose the frequency, so the actual sound, the frequency that you want to boost or, or uh, reduce. You might have a sound that's very um, muddy um, in, the, uh, in the vocal area and just sort of that honky sort of sound sometimes, so you probably turn it down to find that frequency and then once you've found that frequency, you use the blue knob that's attached to it with the line, you use that to actually drop the level, or in some cases you might want to boost some highs somewhere, you, uh, you raise it and choose the frequency that coincides. The one below that is lows or bass, so uh, pretty self-explanatory, if you want to boost the bass or lower the bass, uh, you use that. You usually use um, if you've got good quality microphones, you don't need to do a lot with these, just very gentle, whatever you do. Um, the next section down is these three knobs are auxiliaries or auxes as they're uh, being shortened to here. Uh, the two pink ones are both the same and they're usually used for uh, your fallback or monitor speakers so you can hear yourself on stage or in-ear monitors if you um, of, uh, can afford to have in-ear monitors and um, what you do is you set the level of these to what you want to hear so say um, if you want to hear more of uh, this channel than that channel you obviously set this one higher than you do that one we might want not want to hear this channel at all um, and these two pink ones as I said they're used for fallback or monitors and they are what's known as pre-fade down the bottom of the desk here, this is your um, fader for the channel. So this actually sets the level that's going out to the uh, the front of house speakers going out. So that's that's how you set set the level the volume for that. And these two pink ones, as I said, are pre-fade. So what that means is, whatever you set them to, whatever level you set them to, they'll stay. Um, doesn't matter what you do with this fader, they'll stay at the level you set them to, which is very handy for fallback. You don't want it going up and down. So in other words, you can pull, you can um, mix your front of house sound up and down and it won't affect those two at all. So for fallback, that's what you want. The next one down is the orange one and that is post fade. Now what that means is wherever you set it, it won't have any effect until you actually push the fader up or down. In other words, it follows whatever your sound is. So this is usually used for effects. It actually says effects on this. It goes uh, through the effects area over here. Um, but what that does is um, makes a lot of sense, as in if you've got reverb um, or delay or something on your, uh, on your sound, you don't want it um, staying up you, you want it to actually follow. So if it's your vocal and you've got reverb on it, you want it, when you push your vocal up, you want the reverb to come up with it to follow it so it stays matched. So that's post-fade used for effects. Um, the next one down is the pan. Now, 
this is just to um, either put your sound from that particular channel on either the right speaker or the left speaker if you're running a stereo system. Now the next one down we have is the, uh, the mute button um, which is here, you can see just above the fader and most um, mixers have a mute button on the, each channel but not all so you won't always find this but um, it's often a, uh, a tricky one where you can't get any sound out and you think why and you've uh, left it muted. In other words that's self explanatory, it mutes the sound when it's down so no sound will come out so you need it up to hear, um, hear what's actually happening. Okay over on the right side here of the desk you'll see the last fader across is usually always your master fader so it controls the output of the sound um, to the speaker so it's the last thing in the uh, in the chain and so what happens is each one of these channels as the levels are set up they feed across into the output section and this controls the overall volume. Um, in this particular desk we actually have what they call subgroups, these last four faders here. Um, won't go into detail about them today but um, we'll do another section, another show on them later on but they, they control, um, you can set each, say, say if you have five channels here for drums you can actually assign those five channels just to this one fader and control the drum level with that fader once you've got your sound mix so it saves you pulling up and down um, five separate six seven separate faders or whatever you just put them into the one so we'll talk about that uh, in future in a future episode but today we'll um, we'll get some sound happening um, I've got uh, the old faithful uh, iPod here um, still going I hope, I hope it's got enough battery to get us through this and what we'll do is um, patch that in and play a little bit of music through it. Now what we've done is patched it into this um, last channel here, the 15 and 16 so this will demonstrate a little bit about how to actually get the sound in um, through the channel and out through the master. So we'll uh, press play on our iPod and we'll unmute the channel, that's the first thing we do, unmute it so that uh, the sound can come through. Now we won't turn up the fader at all yet, what we'll do is down the bottom here, down here there's a little button called PFL or solo. It's the last button usually or it can be found up here sometimes but it's usually called PFL or solo, most desks have them. Um, you press that down and what it does it sends the signal that you've got coming in to these uh, LEDs over here that give you your sound level. So what, uh, or else you can listen to it through headphones is the other way. So PFL stands for pre-fader listen or, or solo. So you're actually soloing so you can just hear that channel through your headphones or on your meter. So at the moment the LEDs are just about flickering but not much happening there. So I'll just what we do is we go to our gain, this is a way to set your gain. What we're trying to do is turn the gain up until it gets up to about there which is zero. You can see it almost hitting, just hitting occasionally that amber. We don't want it hitting the red or the amber too much so just below the amber is probably a good spot and that's around the zero mark on this, uh, this meter. So that means now that our level, our gain is set to the optimum level for the signal coming in. So that's always a good way to go for all of your inputs is use your gain and your PFL button to check that level. It just shows you, as well as showing you've got level coming in, it shows that it's at the right level. Um, you don't want it too low or too high. If it's too high it will be distorted, if it's too low it'll be noisy and you won't be able to get enough volume out of it. So now what we'll do, we'll come down to our faders and what we'll do is we'll just push our master fader up a little bit, so about halfway and slowly bring up the channel 16 and you should start to hear hopefully a little bit of music coming through. Okay, little Paul Kelly there. Now 
what we do, I've brought them both up to get the level right for you guys, but we'll get, get rid of that PFL. And you can see now, this meter is now showing the level of the master. So pull the master down, it goes, pull it up, it's back there. So that's your, um, showing your level that's going out to your speakers, in this case going out so you can hear it. So we'll, while we've got the music playing, we might try, um, let's pull it down a little bit, we might try um, showing the, the EQ effect. So as I said up here, we only have three EQs, the high, mid and low. So we'll demonstrate those. So the high, if I boost it, you can hear it changing. Turn it down, you can hear the clearness going. Turn it up, you can hear it, the crispness coming up. The mid, up and down. You also might notice over here when I turn it up and down, it's having an effect on the um, on the levels going out to the uh, the front of house. So you may have to turn your gain down if you've boosted, or or turn your gain up if you've dropped too much, so your level stays right. And then the bass. You can hear the difference there as I turn it up and down. Okay, so we'll pull that back down. So that's basically how you uh, you mix, you push it up until it's the right level. That might be a backing track, say, for your vocals. And then you push your vocal up, which may be over here, until you um, get them mixed properly. Now, on this particular desk, we also have a graphic EQ, just a little basic uh, seven band graphic EQ. So seven, yep, seven knobs across there, you can see. Now, I'll put the music back up, and you'll hear, if I push them up and down, you can hear the Christmas go up there or down. So in other words, this end is all your highs and this end is all your lows. And this <clears throat> basically is a tone control for the overall sound that's going out to your speakers. So you use that to change the sound that's actually of the overall mix going out to your speakers. And often you'll have um, um, a lot more complicated um, EQ than that um, <clears throat> with usually 31 bands, 31 knobs, but on a basic basic little PA, it's um, quite okay to have just the seven. Just another thing on the, uh, the masters, uh, once again, you shouldn't have uh, the meters going above, sort of hit, hitting the orange is all right, but it should never hit the red or else you'll have distorted sound. If you're running that hard, means that your, uh, your PA is probably um, not quite big enough. Well, that's about it for our basic overview of a, a mixer. Um, as I said, this is an analog mixer, and uh, later on we'll touch on um, digital mixers and how they work. Um, but we thought we'd start with the basic analog mixer. So if you understand this, it helps you then understand any big mixer. And when you look at a 40 channel mixer or something, just break it down into those individual channels, and it won't seem so daunting uh, what the guy's doing or girl. Um, I haven't touched on everything on this desk, we haven't looked at effects and um, compression and things like that, but I thought we'd just keep it basic. We'll move on to those in future episodes. Uh, if I've missed anything, uh, let me know. And uh, if you've got any other questions uh, about mixing desks, also uh, let us know. And uh, we can be contacted by email at info at musohub.tv. And also, if you want to know, we're going to do lots more of these videos, um, the technical side of uh, being a musician. So if you um, want to keep up to date with everything that's happening, just make sure you subscribe if you're on YouTube or friend us on Facebook and, uh, and we'll keep you updated. So uh, until next time, thanks a lot and that's been Musatech.